Hey ladies and gents, it's Zembak, and we are looking at the new Tier 8 Premium um, Fighter for, uh, for the Germans, the Horton HO229. Um, well, yeah, uh, pretty slick looking aircraft. Uh, it's currently available by doing a bunch of missions, or buying certificates, or doing both like I did to get this plane. Um, what is it? Well... In the 1930s, there was two, bro two brothers, and uh, their last name was Horton. Uh, they were developing gliders, and they came up with the. They, they developed specifically. They were looking at um, flying wings, right? Without a actual body, um, it would reduce drag, of course. Uh, so they were looking into this whole flying wing concept, and they did actually build the glider uh, of this. Um, I believe it was called the H4. Um, that's what it is right there. Uh, that was the original design uh, the Hortons came up with in the, uh, I believe, the mid-30s. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was already being thought of um, in the 30s uh, for this aircraft. In uh, 1940, uh, Goring uh, came up, um, pressed into the, uh, asked for, better a requirement for a what they called by the three 1000 project <coughs> essentially what it was 1000 kilograms of ordnance 1000 kilo or 1000 kilometers of range and 1000 kilometers per hour of speed the only way they're going to get the speed of course was jets however fuel efficiency wise they couldn't get the range so the Horton brothers uh, decided to uh, go with the flying wing to reduce drag uh, to pick up the speed um, that was required of this uh, 3 1000 project. Um, they brought it forward, or they, th this was awarded um, a contract to build, I believe the original was 40 production planes. Uh, it eventually was turned over to um, Gother, Gotha, uh, I believe how it was, that's the company that actually built these aircraft. And it was an interesting design. Um, uh, an entirely s steel interior, um, essentially, and covered in wood. Uh, obviously, probably to keep the weight down and whatnot. Um, powered by two, uh, originally, uh, Jumo engines, uh, I believe. The original ones were Jumo 04s. Uh, I, do I think they... Actually, I'm not sure if it was the BMWs they wanted. There was a set of engines that it was originally designed for but they weren't available at the time. So in 1944, uh, the very first version of this one, um, the HV-1, uh, flew as a glider uh, and was successful. The H-2 uh, flew in December of 1944, uh, finally under power. Tests went well, uh, performed well, and there's even a talk of in uh, that it flew against ME 262 in mock combat and improved superior <coughs> we don't know if that's true or not uh, that's kind of a story that um, you know is bandied around however shortly after um, I believe in 1945 um, the test pilot uh, during um, testing of the aircraft uh, ended up having an engine flame out of him catch fire uh, and he ended up crashing the airplane and dying himself. Um, I do believe that would be him, Erwin Ziller. He is actually inside of the Orton 229. Well, what they call this was a pressurized, they called it the Drager suit. Uh, it was essentially an early version of what the NASA uh, developed for space. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a primitive pressure uh, suit. Uh, including all this aircraft also had a primitive um, ejection seat. Um, so yeah, that was the first two the first two models. Uh, the V3, uh, the 229 V3, uh, was just being completed uh, when the Germans decided that they needed to rush it into service. Uh, however, they were never able to... I mean, I think it was almost like 95%, 98% complete um, when... Uh, the factory fell to the Allied forces. Uh, the, the Americans, of course, snapped this airplane up right away uh, and sent it back to the United States <coughs> for testing. The original design 
uh, was to be armed with uh, the two 30 millimeter cannons uh, that we see mounted here. Um, actual performance of the aircraft, uh, I do believe they were predicting right around 590 miles an hour would have been its top speed. Uh, so faster than most of the aircraft uh, of that time. Um, had good, apparently good flight characteris characteristics, uh, even without any vertical control services. Um, yeah, it, it was kind of an interesting, like I said, interesting design with a steel frame structure uh, layered over with wood. Uh, apparently after World War II, one of the Horton brothers actually told the Allies uh, that they had used a special paint um, or coating on the exterior using a, some sort of charcoal uh, that would have made it very stealthy. Um, apparently then nobody's ever been able to uh, confirm this. Um, but yeah, which brings it on to in 2008, Northrop Grumman um, decided that they were going to try and see exactly if this thing really was uh, as stealthy as they uh, claimed. Uh, and they built the full-size version of this aircraft uh, and, take it, and took it to a facility where they were able to um, uh, essentially use radar on it <laughs> and find out exactly how stealthy this aircraft was. Um, approaching at roughly 500 miles an hour, um, at about, I believe they said 100 feet or so off of the water, it had about an 80% return compared to a BF-109. So it was a slightly stealthier uh, than a BF-109 at similar altitude um, from the front. So not necessarily a stealth, complete stealth, I guess you could call it. Uh, and of course, this, the um, the actual the the model they built didn't have any steel in it and it also didn't have any engines. So there is that to it. So did they really prove it was a super stealth bomber or the really original stealth bomber? No, not really. The aircraft itself was designed, of course, to be a light bomber, uh, the original one, um, but later on as, they, uh, as, the, serv uh, as the war continued, uh, bombers were taken off uh, and it was switched to a fighter. There was a couple different other versions. There was gonna be a two-seat version an all-weather fighter, I guess you could call it. I think they had up to seven different versions planned of this aircraft. Now, I was able to find a couple pictures of it. Uh, there's not a lot here of original pictures of the Horton. Uh, here's one being towed, uh, another one being fueled, and, of course, one that's being built. Kind of interesting to see. And the last one is... Uh, the one that the only one that survives, the V3, uh, which is at the Smithsonian, uh, and apparently is being <coughs> restored um, slowly but surely. Um, yeah, there's another picture of it. There's the wings uh, and, of course, the fuselage. This one right here is the one that uh, Northrop uh, built for the full-size version uh, that they built for the uh, testing. Uh, and I do believe this is in hanging in San Diego um, at some uh, air museum. So with that said, what do we have? Um, I'll be honest with you. Eh, it's kind of eh, right? I don't know what they were planning on doing. I mean, technically it's a light fighter, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's an energy fighter, obviously. Uh, not much for maneuverability. Good to altitude performance. Um, yeah, that's, it's an odd duck. I don't know how to describe it doesn't turn real well. Those two rather mm, big pop guns, the two 30 millimeters, pack a serious punch. However, hitting with them uh, is an entirely different thing. Um, yeah, it, it's an interesting aircraft. I, I, I'm not going to say it's like super duper, but it's because it's not. I wouldn't call it, I mean, if you're on, you're on. You're going to smack some shit. If you're off, you're off. It's just... Uh, the guns kind of let it down. And then, of course, the way they kind of fit it in here, um, performance-wise, uh, yeah, it's kind of just a meh aircraft. So take it for you once you're worth. If it's free, if you can do all the missions, go ahead and get it. Um, but, yeah, it's you'll see in the game when I'll talk about it. And I'll talk about it in the game a little bit here um, as I'm flying it. So with that said, I'll bring up some gameplay for you guys to, to check out. Hey ladies and gents, we are back with the first game in the 
HO229. Now, I said in the garage I preferred the DO-335. Obviously, that's a heavy fighter. That's a light fighter. We're going to clear that up. Uh, this is a light fighter. That's a heavy fighter. However, this plane it wants to be a heavy fighter. Maybe that's what I have a problem with. Um, it's kind of a contra... I mean, it's it's just contrary to a light fighter type. Um, it wants to be a heavy fighter. And... Uh, I, Job-wise, I think the DO-335 does the job better than this thing does. Um, and uh, maybe I'm kind of maybe a little bit, you know, biased because I'm not a big fan of the um, the, the 230s. Uh, I mean, I prefer the um, the DO-335 with the uh, uh, the two uh, smaller caliber cannons. Uh, so the, that that's my, that's when I was saying in the garage that I prefer... Uh, I think the DO-335 is a better plane, um, probably because it fulfills an actual role as a heavy fighter. This thing is kind of stuck in the middle, right? Um, not really a heavy fighter, and it's not really necessarily a great light fighter, maybe, possibly. Uh, it, energy fighter-wise, it's, you know, relatively fine, but it's it just, I don't know, maybe I need to play it more. I don't. I didn't play a whole bunch of games in it, but it just felt like uh, it was trying to fulfill a role that doesn't really... Um, have the necessary equipment to do, right? Maybe that's maybe that's what I'm trying to say here. So, but it's all subject to what you prefer, right? If you like the big 30s, uh, the energy type like this, um, I, I said obviously the DO-35 is a heavy fighter, uh, which does a pretty bang-up job of it. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion on it. You might disagree, you might not disagree. That's entirely up to you. However, back to the game here. And I, I'll tell you, obviously, um, I'm not the best shot in the world, um, especially when it comes to uh, these 30s. Um, yeah, uh, this thing is a great little heavy fighter hunter. Uh, if you like to shoot down heavy fighters, it turns out turns most of them um, at this tier. Uh, with its speed and um, altitude performance, it can stay on. Uh, of course, it's more agile than most of the heavy fighters. Um, dealing with a lot of bombers and that kind of stuff, especially if it's a human bomber, um, you just don't have the HP or the survivability. This thing loses engines pretty quickly. So, like I said, with the altitude performance and the speed of it, you're going to be tempted to go after bombers. Um, bot ones are fine. If they're not bots and they're humans and they have a good cruise, they will rip your shit up because uh, you just don't have the HP or the survivability part of it. Like I said, the, this thing loses its engines quite a bit, uh, or at least it seemed like that. And, of course, it's um, uh, pilot. And I think that the survivability is like a 9 compared to some of the heavy fighters that are over 15. So yeah, it, it's you're tempted to play that heavy fighter role um, because of its ability to go well over 3,000 meters relatively quick here. So, drop here on the BF-19. We're up 3-1 right now. There we go. Probably not a good choice. I realized my mistake. I was like, eh, no. Shit. So, I pulled a uh, potato move there by taking on the BF-109. I thought maybe he was going to try to curve away from me, but he didn't. He decided to go head-to-head. -head. So we are with Kabala and the B-32. Uh, look at the fucking number of bombs on that thing. Yeah, there we go. Back into the game here. Still up 3-1. Headed to our other objective here. Uh, there's the KI-84. Let's see if we can knock him out quick. Ooh, dropping down here. Let's see if we put a big boom on him. Ooh, there we go. When they hit, they're awesome. Um, unfortunately, and then I'll be honest too, it's best to be at range with them. Um, they start getting under 300 meters and you, you have a little trouble. I don't know, like I said, the guns uh, don't um, match up with the sight until it's obviously they get out a little bit further. So you get in too close, uh, then you don't quite get the um, accuracy. Maybe that's the better word for it. You'll see me, sometimes you'll see the shells just riddle it. And obviously with this screwed up, um, the uh, screwed up um, where the actual shells are going uh, compared to where it's hitting, you know, that's the replay bug that uh, uh, that, that the World of Warplanes is known for. Uh, when you're actually looking at the, down the sight of the gun, um, they usually tend to go right towards center, uh, but you can see they don't meet um, until you're, they're quite a ways out uh, before the two shells start to come together. Uh, and it seems like the closer you are, uh, it's a little harder to uh, make the hit. So try to stay out maybe four or 500 meters. 
Uh, it seems like to get the best effect of the two guns. Dropping down here on the A6M2. Maybe that's just my observation, but <laughs> it sure seemed like you get within under 400 meters, uh, the, the shells are just, uh, it seemed like they were spacing around the aircraft uh, you were trying to shoot here. So up 4-1, start to climb. This thing does have ridiculously great, I shouldn't say ridiculous, it does have a really good climb rate. Um, the boost is only about nine seconds. Uh, of course, if you have the boost uh, consumable, uh, you can pull this stuff off quite often. Um, picking up the uh, I-220 here in Yakov. Let's see if we can nail him. Like I said, for the most part, I enjoyed the aircraft. Um, certainly not saying this is a complete dog um, by no means. Um, there's people that can really make this thing work. If you're a new player here and you're not really terribly sure uh, about these big guns, um, especially in a light fighter. If you're a heavy fighter, yeah, you're probably used to them, especially in the higher tiers. Uh, however, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not comfortable with the 30 mils, um, you're not going to have a good time with this aircraft. Just straight up. Uh, this is not something that, obviously, if you can get it for free, get it. You know, I'm not definitely not saying that. It's just, uh, for the f most part, you're not going to have a good time with the um, 30s uh, if you have a shitty shot like I do. Let's see here. We have the BF 409. See, and here's what I was talking about. When you get within too close, uh, the shells kind of go around everything because they split, you know, obviously with the, they're on either side of the fuselage. I'll probably show you here what I'm talking about. I can get it to no I wouldn't do it anyway um, the shells are or the cannons are on either side of the cockpit uh, so there's a little bit of a sp spacing there so let's pick up the JU-88 and like I said the, with its altitude performance and the speed and that stuff you want to you keep wanting to do this all the time right um, get in behind the bombers here because you have these big 30 mils that like to blow things up likes to take off big hit points works fine against um, bot bombers but if you're gonna deal with human bombers with good uh, rear pilots or rear gunners uh, it's not always the easiest thing in the world um, this thing gets just shredded because uh, of its low survivability rate however if you don't get it behind them and you make passes at them you're probably a little better off here let's pick up the F2G finish him off here puts us up to about 10k for the personal points here let's drop down um, almost over with here. It's three to two right now. There's that KI-84 from earlier. Human pilot. Um, not terribly afraid. Just not going to get into a turn fight with him. Make a pass on him. That's what this thing does. This is an energy fighter. Uh, do not turn if all possible. Use your boost. Use your altitude performance to get away from him. Just like I'm doing right here. Um, you know, I'm already up to 2,700 meters. Uh, 29, 3,000 meters right there. Now I'm up high enough where I don't have to worry about these guys. Now I can come turn around here and drop on the A6, well, that was an A6M. Crazy that he was uh, actually up that high. Back around we go. I think that was an A6M. Maybe not. Oh, that, I'm sorry, it was an F4U4. So I got kind of in a bad spot here. I get two of them. Put a big hurt on him. Unfortunately, I got two guys here. And there was I was talking about earlier with the survivabilities, survivability of the aircraft. You end up using losing a lot, your engine a lot. Um, thankfully, you have two, so it's not too bad. Unfortunately, I can't quite get around because the BVP is right there. Uh, I got into a turn fight. Obviously, you don't. Want to All right, guys, back at the second game in the HO229. Um, yeah, uh, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, there is a DO, there's HO, I'm sorry, I keep saying DO, there's an HO229 on the other side. Um, I, now, usually when I said I do these plane reviews, I usually only do, I play about 10 games or so with them, then I do the review with uh, what I can produce. And I've had good games with it, don't get me wrong, this thing does, will produce if you get the guns to hit. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I'm a... Uh, um, I'm still a little jaded, I guess. Like I said, with those guns. There we go. Started to get some hits on them right off the bat. Just about collide with my uh, um, friendly. Up and over. They've already picked up the forward airstrip. Uh, let's see here if I can knock out. There we go. Pick up the first kill on that plane. And we've almost got this flipped. Looking for the next one. There we go. Got both of them. Got the uh, center. Or I'm sorry, the um, command center. And we're going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to see if we can head to the... Uh, to the other uh, objective over here. However, we do get a TO2, TU2, 
Uh, and I was said earlier that yeah, against you know you want to play that suppression on the um, uh, against bombers. Uh, fine if it's a bot bomber, like I said, um, they're just they just don't have quite the tail guns that a fully uh, <laughs> upgraded human will have. Um, so we're picking up some red baddies as they come in here. Let's see if we put this back into the boost here, and we're gonna get out of here. Yeah, this is what this thing does. Energy fighter up and over and down we come uh, he's gonna stall out and we're gonna pull down in here and nail him this is kind of the bread and butter of this plane that works real well for this you get a nice you get a another light fighter on your tail you just simply boost away from him up and over back down and then you can pick up the um, easy kill on the stalled out plane here so pick up the TU2 and yeah starting to get the the um, those 230s to hit and when they do hit they just fucking wreck everything. Up and over we go. Back down. And what do we have down here? Oh, there's a uh, specialized something. Oh, it's Spitfire. Let's see if we can pick him up here. He's at about a thousand meters. Nice range, uh, nice range on these guns. Trying to get him to hit. We're pulling a little closer here. There we go. Now we got our first hit. And we get both of them uh, to nail him and finish him off here. So I've nailed... Uh, two fighters here, so I need to knock something out here relatively quick here before we lose this. Uh, they just keep rolling right on in here. All right, there we go. Pick up the um, uh, IL-8, make a pass, and back around here. Let's see if we pick up this guy as he's leaving. Be nice to nail him and get him out of here. Fortunately, he's outside of the objective here. I didn't realize he just got out as we finished him here. There we go. Uh, and it didn't help us. So they were able to, I should have switched the other GA or stayed on the other GA to knock him out instead of going after this guy, but one of those, I thought I could get him before he left, but not quite. Pull down here on the IL-8. Oh, chest. And that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier about the gun, the, when the shells come out, they seem to, the closer you get, obviously, um, not, not quite as accurate. So let's get out of here. Let's climb to, climb to altitude. I got the, uh, I got some uh, light fighters on me, and still have one engine. Thankfully, two engines. Up we go. Up to about 1,900 meters, and we're gonna flip over here and take out um, this uh, fighter, A6M2. Put a big hurt on him, but I don't get all of him. Got the engine back into operation. Up and over. Uh, I'd really like to get this objective back here before too long. There we go. Finish him off. And we got to turn back. No more baddies, though. Uh, and I don't have any bombs because it's a light fighter. So we got to get out of here um, and get, try to go get something else. And I'm hoping that these three right here is going to be able to do something. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. This is a good fight. It was a relatively close game. Uh, most of the match, they pull out a, uh, a win on us on this deal here. Pick up the J4M. Let's see if I can nail him. Oh, never mind. There's the there's the other HO. Oh, I get a, I can't quite get on him. Oh, he pulls hard, and we're gonna stick that into a turn. Unfortunately, there's a lot of red baddies right here. I'm on wing is damaged, and I'm kind of on fire here. Unfortunately, that leaves me uh, with the other human. So there's two humans here, and I was not able to finish him off. Funny how that works out. Right, just right when you're thinking you're going to get some here. So we're up 3 1. Um, we got the IL 20 here. He's working his way through here to this objective. Um, however, they flip one of the command centers back, and we're back to a 2 2 all game. So relatively tight 312, 321. Let's see if this guy can pick this up here before he dies. And we're back in the game here, hopefully, uh, to do something here. Heading to this other next objective. Uh, good speed. Uh, you can get it from objective to objective, obviously. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about taking him on, then I'm like, no, let's see if we can do something about these incoming bombers. Um, I would really want to keep this objective rolling as much as I possibly can. So we're going to take these guys head on, pick up some of the low... Nope, never mind. They nailed him. There we go. Get a couple of hits on him. Up and over we go. They've nailed him. Most of those bombers are dead, I believe. Uh, yeah, so here we go. We got a inbound multi-roll. He's at altitude, the Falk Wolf. Let's see if I can finish him real quick. 
Oh. Take a little bit of pilot damage. Up and over we go. Let's see if I can finish him off here quick. There we go. Heller, he is dead now. He dead. He dead. He real dead. However, they got bomber pilot bombers up on two fronts. And we want this objective back here. So I'm going to head over here to the command center. Try to pick these up <coughs> as quick as possible here. I got a bunch of blue with me. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's necessarily the right ones. Um, pick up the A6M2 coming in here. There we go. Finish him off here. Next one. Finish him off here. Um, got it mostly back. We just need to kill one more red, possibly, and maybe pick up the... Um, there, finish him off. Uh, we've picked up the command center again. It's been ba It's been back and forth. They pick up one, we pick up one. Now I'm going to jump back over here and pick up some of the bombers as they're going inbound. I'm trying to keep that as much as possible. Yeah. Love it when they hit. Not the best when they don't. <laughs> and I should say, I you know, after a little bit of playing, I think probably about my 8th or ninth game of the 10 I played, um, I was now probably quicker than that. Probably 5 or 6 I was starting to get a little bit better at this uh, 30s. And I, I'm not typically one that plays the big caliber uh, planes. Um, but yeah, up and over here. Find the uh, TU-2. There he goes. Let's see if we can finish him off here before. Um, still 2-2. Two, two. And I get kind of stuck here. I should have been headed south right away. Um, but I wanted to keep this as much as possible uh, before they drop back down on the command center. Uh, and I'm getting shot from all kinds of shit. Um, the Typhoon picks up the uh, other TU-2. Squall line is up, so they're gone. Unfortunately, we are right at just down a few. I need another objective here. I had to start heading south here. It's the closest objective to me. Um, if I would have turned and probably headed back right away, kind of a one of those eh moments where I should have spent less time fucking with those bombers uh, and headed south here, we could have picked this other objective here. Uh, as quick as possible. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get here in time. Uh, they're winning slightly. 534, 579. It was a good fight. Uh, it's always nice to have these kind of games here. Pick up the J4M. Um, nope. We're going to drop on this guy. He's going through. There we go. Pick up the A6M2 right about the time. Um, yeah. Good game. Alright guys, back with the last game, and I haven't talked about the credit earning, it does earn credits pretty nice. Uh, I had a lot of 200k silver games with this plane. Um, yeah, so it's uh, definitely, definitely a credit earner, but I mean, just, it's tier 8, just like tanks and warships. Uh, you produce a, so, such a amount of um, personal points or you know, gray, uh, whatever uh, class you are, uh, you're going to make a certain amount of cash every time. Um, so yeah, there's no problem with at least with that way. So we're headed south here. I am playing with Carter, I believe, in this game. Uh, this was earlier today before I had to go drop my kids off for the week. Uh, they went to Grandma's house, so I have a whole week by myself. Carter's playing the ME209A, um, and we're going to head over here and see if we can pick up the heavy fighters. There he is. Yeah, and that seems to be kind of a sweet spot right there. About 400 to 700 seems to be the... Then you start getting in with this range right here, and it just seems like it's lots of misses. Up and over. He pulls a fast one. Starts headed the opposite direction. There we go. Finish him off. And we pick up the other A6M2. Nail him with both shells. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the destruction of that thing uh, when they hit, right? Start to climb. Um... You know, and honestly, the more I think about it, if you really think that, uh, I do believe he was AFK. Um, but you know what? HP is HP. XP is XP. We're going to pick him up here quick as he's uh, leaving the uh, scene before he... There we go. Come on, one more. Nope. There we go. Now we finish him off. So yeah, kind of much dirty pool, but you know what? Whatever. <laughs> HP is HP. XP is XP, right? All right, back to center here. Carter is currently in a scuffle. Um, yeah, Let's see if we can give him a hand here. So we are up 2-1 right off the bat. Start to boost up here. Oh, that is a great boost. Now, I've never hit the red line. I think I've had it up to about 3,400 meters. 
Um, but yeah, it's got some uh, ridiculously uh, decent amount of um, boost here. Pick up the 302. There's one. And around we go. Let's see if we can stay with him. There we go. Oh, nailed him. Uh, yeah, the 302. So, what do we got left here? We got a f one bomber. See me trying to exit here. Let's see if we can catch him before he gets out. Oh, there we go. One more. Ah, catch him just as he was right on the edge. I don't think that helped me any, though. Uh, and I got Carter below me. He is um, working everything over. Trying to find our next target here. We need to finish this off here relatively quick. Pick up the F2G. Never mind. Carter finishes off the KI-93. KI um, there we go. Pick up the F2G as he goes through. Deadpool. That was the AFK plane that's still flying by. There's the F2G. Can I finish him? There's one hit. Oh, take about half his hit point. Can't stay in its turn with that plane. So we're just going to put this right into the boost um, and do what it does, right? Which is climb. Climb. So now he's he's fallen. Let's see if we can pick him up here. Yep, he uh, couldn't quite keep up with. And that's about the time um, I start to get chased by all kinds of shit. There's red everywhere. Raymond and XP-72 and a specialized something or other. Wow, that was spectacular. Right into that mountain of rock. <laughs> Still up 3-2. And Carter is mowing shit down. He's got the um, Spitfire in front of him. Staying with him in a turn. He is a monster, that plane. All right, back to center. And we pick up the G, uh, the uh, multi-roll going through here in Troy. Put a big hurt on him. Round we go. Um, you know, like I said, I had a, uh, the, ten, the 10 games I played for the uh, review, I had some really good games in it. it. It does perform. I don't know if it's necessarily considered a carry plane. Um, I guess it depends on how well your RNG and are targeting you know, that day. Uh, but you can shoot down a fair amount of planes, um, you know. But like I said, light fighter-wise, uh, oh, there's uh, the 302 again. They are all over um, uh, Carter here, and I'm trying to help him out here. Lose my direction. I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. Ugh. Hate when that happens. <laughs> I thought I had more altitude. Apparently not. There was a mountain there. If there wasn't been a mountain there, I would have been fine. So, back in again here. We got Voodoo Preacher 42. And the fight in the middle is turned into an epic shit show. Uh, there is red everywhere. And uh, he picks up the TU-1. Unfortunately, um, they've we lost the airbase here. We are still up two, three to 2. Uh, we got bombers everywhere on the battlefield. Um, headed to uh, maybe give Carter a hand here. There's a lot of red there in the middle. Yep, he gets picked up by the J7W1. And I'm not going to go into that mess. That's just not going to be fun. Not fun at all. So, back around. Let's see what we got over here. There's a red plane, red baddie. Um, kind of waiting until the blues show up here a little bit. Uh, they are working over a uh, bomber formation here. So, let's make, a let's make a pass on some of these bombers. Let's see if we can knock out a few of them as we go by. Or at least knock off a bunch of their hit points. Yeah, didn't quite get all of it. Oh, there's an F4. Ouch. Find the 302 here. He's coming straight at me. That was uh, that was a nice pass. Put it into the climb. Give a little bit of boost. Up and over we go. Let's see if we can pick up that 302. He's coming back for more. Uh, he is... I don't remember the altitude performance on that aircraft. But I think he's trying to stay with me here. There we go. Pick up the 302. Round we go. I think, I think, I think I'm more maneuverable. I guess I am a little slightly but more maneuverable. There we go. Put some damage in on his wings. And he should be able to kill him. About now. If I can hit him. I can hit him. Knock him out. Carter dies to the P-47N. <coughs> and it's still a 4-1. Uh, 40 seconds to... Uh, squall line. I don't know what that was. Eugenio from Falco, but um, GG. I'm not. Uh, yep. So we're up to about 3,600 meters here. 30. Oh, there we go. Now we've hit red line. I lied. I guess I have hit red line. About 3,700 meters. 
drop it back down here. We got a four to one advantage. Uh, and now it's time to pick up some uh, planes here for the last bit of it. There's a couple, come on, Hans in the JU-88A. Um, this thing loves, I mean, I'll be honest, the bigger airplanes, it's, it's what thing, this was what it does. Um, bot bombers, uh, heavy fighters, it uh, likes to fuck them up. So, center is, uh, looks like it's turning into a shit show. Up and over we go. Let's see here, we got another bomber coming through here. Now I'm just picking up some uh, XP. We are up four or five one, so it's more of a, let's put some damage down, let's see if we can kill some planes before the game's over, because it's gonna be over here shortly. Around we go. There we go. Let's see if we can finish off the JU-88. Nice! And still got some red baddies, but we're done. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.